Hi, welcome back to Environmental Quality Management Systems, in this video we will explain about Environmental Performance Evaluation, EPE Part 1. In this video, we will learn about the introduction of EPE. In the introduction of EPE, there are four subtopics which are the definition, role of indicators, EU EMAS regulation DAN ISO 14.000 series of standards. Next, theoretical background with subtopic management theory, sustainability theory, and regulation theory. And the last is an approach with subtopic plan, do, check, and act. Introduction of Environmental Performance Evaluation, EPE Definition According to International Standard Organization, ISO, 14031, ISO, 1999, Environmental Performance Evaluation, EPE, is a process to facilitate management decisions regarding an organization's environmental performance by selecting indicators, collecting, and analyzing data, assessing information against environmental performance criteria, reporting and communicating and periodically reviewing and improving this process. As environmental strategies of organizations are increasingly broadened to encompass sustainability, not only the environment but also social and economic performance comes up for evaluation. Role of Indicator Indicators are used to depict the vast quantity of environmental data of a firm in a comprehensive and concise manner. They are mostly applied to set absolute material and energy data in relation to other variables to increase the informational value of quantitative data. Environmental indicators have the following purposes. 1. Comparison of environmental performance over time. 2. Highlighting of optimization potentials. 3. Technical support for the EU EMAS regulation and ISO 14.001. The EU EMAS Regulation The measurement and monitoring of environmental performance with indicators are important for controlling a company's compliance with the requirement for continuous improvement of environmental performance. The method of the initial review, at which the relevant data of environmental aspects and impacts, raw materials, energy, emissions, waste, noise, legal requirements, and the organization of environmental protection at the site are checked, vary considerably, ranging from simple checklists to elaborate eco-balances. An environmental program should aim to arrive at concrete measures resulting from quantitative targets which have been identified through the environmental assessment. It is often observed that firms lay out measures and then try to assess their improvement potential, instead of setting targets based on previous data as required and only then deciding about organizational and technical measures to be taken. Regarding environmental audits, indicators should make it quite clear to what extent goals have been realized and achieved. Finally, the regulation lays down rules for the publishing of environmental statements, whereby data should be presented in absolute form, as well as in relation to production units, to allow for comparison with previous years. The ISO 14.000 series of standards for environmental management. To arrive at a worldwide methodology of tools for environmental management, a separate technical committee TC207 under the International Standards Organization was established in 1993. It was divided into various subcommittees, SCs, and workgroups, to create the series of standards 14,000 which would account for all aspects of environmental management. The SCs deal with the following items. 1. SC1 Environmental Management Systems. 2. SC2 Environmental Auditing. 3. SC3 Environmental Labeling. 4. SC4 Environmental Performance Evaluation. 5. SC5 Life Cycle Assessment 6. SC6 Environmental Management, Terms and Definitions Theoretical Background of Environmental Performance Evaluation, EPE Management Theory The first element in the theoretical background is management theory. For theoretical roots, it uses classical management theory, strategic management, organizational behavior. Next is applications for management theory and EPE as controlling, recopies and models of corporate excellence, lastly performance evaluation. Sustainability theory. The second element in the theoretical background is sustainability theory. 
The theoretical roots in sustainability theory consist of Brundtland's report, limits of Earth's carrying capacity, laws of thermodynamics. Furthermore, applications for sustainability theory in EPE are zero growth, self-sufficiency, sustainable consumption, and eco-efficiency. Regulation theory. The third element in theoretical background is regulation theory. Theoretical roots in regulation theory consist of green radicalism, internalizing externalities, and market liberalism, creating marketing. Moreover, applications for regulation theory in EPE as prohibitions and sanctions, quotas, environmental taxes, long-term agreement, and the power of the public. Approach in Environmental Performance Evaluation, EPE. Plan. When planning the environmental performance evaluation, you need to consider the overall spectrum of your activities, products, and services, as well as other things that create the context of your organization. Financial, physical, and human resources needed for managing the EPE must be provided by the management. Depending on the capability and resources of the organization, the starting EPE scope can be limited to those elements of activities, products, or services with the highest priority set by the management. Over time, the initial scope of the EPE can be expanded to include the rest of the activities, products, and services. Using data and information, do. The organization should collect the data on a regular basis to provide input for calculating the values of selected environmental performance indicators. The data should be collected systematically, from appropriate sources, and as frequently as determined by the management. The collected data should be analyzed and transformed into information that describes the effectiveness of environmental protection. To avoid deviations in results, all relevant and reliable collected data must be considered. Reviewing and improving the EPE, check. The EPE of the organization and its results must be reviewed periodically to identify possibilities for improvement. This review can contribute to the actions of the management toward improvement in managing and operating the organization, and to the improvement of environmental conditions. Act. Phases in reviewing the EPE and its results can include reviewing of Achieved effectiveness of environmental protection and its cost Advancement in achieving criteria of environmental protection Appropriateness of criteria of environmental protection Appropriateness of selected environmental performance indicators Sources of data, methods for collection of data, and quality of data. Once you have all this information, you can start improving your system through corrective and preventive actions. Now we will recap what you have learned from this video. All of the following are true for EUMA's regulation and environmental performance evaluation, except A. Indicators should make it quite clear to what extent goals have been realized and achieved. B. Depict the vast quantity of environmental data. C. Arrive at concrete measures resulting from quantitative targets which have been identified through the environmental assessment. D. Legal requirements in the Organization of Environmental Protection at the site are checked. The answer is B. Depict the vast quantity of environmental data. Next question, what is the correct step for the Environmental Performance Evaluation EPE, approach? A. Plan, do, act, and check. B. Do, check, act, and plan. C. Check, plan, act, and do. D. Plan, do, check, and act. The answer is D. Plan, do, check, and act. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and watch our next video.